Hello, welcome to another video from EarnPed.com. I am Stevie B. Happy to have you all with us today. So today is October 3rd, 2022. I'm on Monria. We're back shooting some shubs, trying to see if we can get that second chapter to drop for the Horns mission, the Order of the Elder Gods. So I'm actually about to head back to Planet Calypso. And I wanted to make this video for two reasons. Before we get to the main point of the video, which has nothing to do with what I'm doing on screen right now, I want to give you guys a heads up about the next video that is coming after this. So after this video, I am going to be shooting a video that I've been planning for a very, very long time. And it's a video I've hesitated to put out because I've wanted to wait until the right moment. I don't really think there is such a time as the right moment. I think it's a video that will be an eye-opener for a lot of people, possibly a game-changer for a lot of people. And part of the reason I've been waiting is because I've wanted to wait till closer to 2023. This isn't something I wanted to shoot in the middle of the year. But now that we're into the third quarter, now that we're headed toward Halloween Mayhem and then Christmas Mayhem and then we will be in 2023 right after, I think it's probably a pretty good time. It's probably going to be one of the most eye-opening videos for, I would say, most players that I think they will ever get a chance to get their hands on. Probably some of the best information I'll be able to put out there. I know there will be some players that are like, yeah, that always has kind of made sense to me, but it's going to be an eye-opener for a lot of people. So that video is coming next. I'm actually going to shoot it here on Monria as soon as I shoot this video. So look for that coming out probably in a day or two after this one. So today's video is probably equally important. Today's video is something that I think probably not a lot of players have to really struggle with. But I'm sure there's probably a pretty decent amount of players out there that do have to struggle with it. And it's something that I struggle with personally. So I figured why not shoot a video over it. So how often does this happen? You are somewhere, it can be Monria, it can be Arcadia, it can be Cyrene, it can be Taloon. You're somewhere out in the universe and you're mining and you're hunting. And you're having a great time, you're having fun, you're banging out some missions. But at the end of the day, at some point you reach a time where it's time to go home. And you've got to figure out the best way to get home. Well, how are you going to go about that? How are you going to go about getting all of that loot that you have collected from the planet that you're currently on back to your quote-unquote home planet, be it Cyrene, Arcadia, Calypso, wherever you call home? How are you going to get it there? Well, obviously, you can fly through space. Here's the problem. Space is PvP lootable. So if there's anybody in space and they shoot you down, you're going to lose anything in your hunting loot tab, you're going to lose anything in your mining loot tab, any of those lootable items are going to be gone. So how do you decide when you should fly through space and take the chance on getting looted? How do you decide when you should use a teleporter and just teleport, which costs 7 ped? And how do you decide when you should use a mothership? Well, that is kind of a difficult question to answer for a lot of people. I know it's been a difficult question for me to answer at several times in the past. So that's what I wanted to look at today. How do you really weigh out the options? How do you really decide? Well, the first thing I look at is, am I just taking a very, very, very small, minuscule amount of stuff? If I'm taking, you know, 5,000 sweat from Calypso to Next Island... Yeah, it's a horrendous journey, because Next Island's all the way at the other side of the map. It takes about 45 minutes for me to fly there in my quad, and a good portion of the area I'm flying through is PvP lootable. However, it's five to 10,000 sweat. It's, it's not a life-changing, game-changing amount for me. So, it makes it fairly easy for me to say, okay, I might as well just throw five, 10,000 sweat in my inventory and go. But that's really not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when you have stuff that is of higher value. 
when you have a lot bigger stack. So let's give you guys a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about here. Let's look at my storage manager. So if we go to my inventory here, my inventory here, I've got tier components, tier one, tier three, tier two, tier six. So first of all, look at the markups on these. Market value on the tier two is about 120 to 130 percent markup. I've got 82 ped worth. I've got 591. That is a huge stack of tier two components. I've got 37 tier threes. It's only seven ped, but you're talking 400 percent markup. I've got 7,613 basic stone extractors. That's 76 ped worth at a markup of 132. I've got 106 ped of diluted cloth extractors at a markup of 105, 110%. I've got 2,413 yellow paint cans, 72 ped TT value. You're talking markup of 150, 180% somewhere in there. Orange paint, only six ped worth, but 240% markup. You're talking brown paint, 37 ped worth, 110% markup. 268 surface hardener components, 53 ped, markup 106, 110%. 90 output amps, 36 ped worth, 30 ped of stone extractors, 118 ped socket, three components. I mean, you're talking pretty good chunk of stuff. And then you've got a whole bunch of fruit and stones in there too. You got 100 or 1158 brukite, 2056 paplon, 254 nisset, 350 caldon, 20,000 sweat, 534 advanced mineral extractors, markup 200%, 230%. So this is not a small stack of stuff that I've saved up. This is not minuscule by any means. Now, is it game-changing? Is it going to absolutely crush me if for some reason I was to lose it all? No, I could fly it back, but let's just see what the TT value is real quick before we actually try and make an analysis here. Let's see what we're actually dealing with as far as TT value. So I'm going to take it all out of my inventory. I'm going to drag it over to my carried inventory, merge all stacks. Let's go to the trade terminal real quick. And that's quite a bit of weight. It's 1,236 total kilograms that I'm, I'm currently carrying. Now that includes everything not in these tabs. That includes my armor, my repair tools, stuff like that. But that's still a lot of weight. I can barely walk. Okay, so if I was to be flying back to Calypso through PvP space without adding in markup, without adding in the profitability from selling to other players, just looking at TT value, this loot right here has a TT value of 809.81 ped. So 810 ped. So cash money, you're talking 81 bucks worth of loot. Because there's 10 ped to a dollar. So... 81 bucks worth of loot. So is 81 bucks going to change my life drastically? No. However, when you are looking at the markups that are involved in there, you're actually talking a lot more than 81 bucks. You're talking a substantial amount more than 81 bucks. You're talking probably closer to 100 to 110, 115 dollars worth of stuff. You're talking roughly with markup 1100 ped, 1150 ped, somewhere in there worth of stuff with markup so that is that is quite a sizable chunk so now let's think about what the options are option number one I could hold on a second I could throw it all in my quad and I could just fly back to Cali. I could take the chance on losing it. I'm, I'm not really losing the 800 ped. I'm losing the markup too. And you also have to keep in mind, what did I have to spend? What did I have to cycle 
in order to get all this loot in the first place. So remember, this this isn't just I put in a dollar and I got out a dollar worth of loot. This is what was lost, what was the cost of getting this loot in the first place, getting it out of the creatures and into my inventory. So it's really more than 810 ped, but we really just have the TT value to go off. That's really the best gauge that we have. And then we can kind of guess based off what the markups are. We can kind of guess what the total value is after we end up selling all that loot. So knowing that we've got 810 TT value, knowing that after we sell it all, we're looking at probably closer to 11 to 1200 ped, 11, 1150, 1200, somewhere in there. What would really be my best option? Well, I could throw it in the quad. I could fly. I could just take the risk that I possibly get in an attack by a pirate and get shot down. Knowing that there's not a lot of piracy going on these days, that is a very, very attractive option because it saves money. It saves ped. I don't have to pay anything to do it. However, what are the other options? Well, I could teleport down. It would cost me seven ped, and I can teleport directly from Monria to Planet Calypso. Not a bad option because of the fact that Monria allows you to teleport directly to Cali. That's actually a pretty cool option based off where I am. I wouldn't have that option if I was at, let's say, Cyrene, right? That wouldn't be an option at all. So, 7 ped possible to teleport from Monria down. And then, what's my other option? A mothership. Well, a warp is, what, 10, 15 ped these days? Something like that, from one point to another. And the reason I point that out is, like I said, from Monria, I can teleport directly down to Calypso. However, if I'm on Arcadia, I don't have that ability. If I'm on Cyrene or Taloon, I don't have that ability. So if I was on a different planet, anywhere other than Monria, then my option, instead of flying, would be take a mothership. And a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to pay for a warp. Well, think about it in terms of teleporting. Think of it in terms of what I'm looking at right here. Now, it doesn't make a lot of sense to take a mothership from Monria to Cali. But let's assume that I wasn't on Monria. Let's think I was somewhere else, and I did have to use a mothership. And let's assume that the price of a warp was 10 to 15 ped. Let's just assume those things. Which is better? Is it better to fly, or is it better to warp slash teleport? That is essentially the question you were asking yourself at this point when you're determining how to get it back. Well, some things to consider. If you fly... Forget the pirate thing. Forget the PvP lootable thing. Forget all that. What are the basic costs involved in flying? You've got your thruster cost. It's going to take decay to leave the planet. Then it's going to also take decay to land on the planet you're going to. You're also going to have your fuel cost of getting there. Now, if you're in a quad it's or asleep, it's not going to be you know the most expensive thing on the planet but it is going to be a cost. And then, on top of that, you have the time cost. How long is it going to actually take you to get from point A to point B? So if I'm flying from next island to planet Calypso in a quad, it's going to take me about 45 minutes, 40, 45, somewhere in there. If I'm going from Calypso to Arcadia, it's going to take me somewhere in the area of 20-25 minutes in a quad, give or take. These numbers are going to be a lot longer if I was to drive asleep. So we've got three costs. We've got the cost of the thruster decay, we've got the cost, cost of the oil, and then we've got the cost of the time that we're just spending in space flying while we're stressing out at the same time. So three different costs involved. So let's look at that for a second. So the thruster decay is going to be 10 peck, 10 peck, 10 to take off, 10 to land. And then we've got our oil decay, which it's going to vary depending on where you're going. So we can really round out the numbers and we can say just to, to move from point A to point B, if we decide to fly ourselves, it's going to cost us the better part, if we average everything out, of probably a half a ped. I mean, you're looking at 20 peck worth of decay just on the thruster. So then if you add in oil, depending on where you're going and what vehicle you're in, you're probably 30 peck there, give or take, if not more. So let's just count it as a solid half a ped to be safe. I'm sure the oil consumption could be much, much greater depending 
on where you're flying from point A to point B in the galaxy. But let's assume a half a ped, and let's just call that our, our standard, right? So now let's look at our options. Am I really paying 7 ped to teleport from Monria to Calypso safely with all of my loot? No, I'm really paying about 6.5 ped, because that other half a ped, I've got to pay that either way. It's a fixed cost. I've, I've got to pay the thrust, thruster decay and the oil to get from point A to point B. I have to. So I'm taking a half a ped just out of the equation. I'm not really paying 7 ped to teleport down. I'm paying 6.5. The other half a pet I have to pay, I've just got to pay it either way. This is also true if I decide to use a mothership. I'm not paying 10 ped to warp, I'm paying 9.5. Because that other half a ped, I've got to pay it either way. Doesn't matter what I do, doesn't matter if I fly or if I warp, I've got to pay that either way. So really, my costs aren't as quote-unquote high as they would seem for my other options. It's not like I've got to take the cost that I would normally incur and then add the additional cost of the warp ticket to it. I can actually take the cost of the warp ticket and I can subtract out the cost I would have to pay anyway, which actually makes it slightly cheaper, quote unquote, if you see where I'm going with this. So let's say that even if the cost of the warp ticket was 15 ped, it's really my half a ped that I've got to pay anyway, plus 14 and a half ped. So I'm essentially, in the worst case scenario, worst case scenario, paying $1.50 for a warp to get from point A to point B safely with all my loot. Now, uh, about 14 and a half pet of that is the price above and beyond my fixed cost, the thruster decay and the oil. But I also have the time factor. So let's look at the time factor difference. And let's stick with the warp ticket. Let's call the warp ticket 10 to 15 ped, so a dollar to a dollar fifty. Dollar to dollar fifty to safely move all my stuff through space almost instantaneously. Now, yes, the ship ha does have to warp, and then it's got to come out of warp, and then I've actually got to get from the ship down to the planet. So, I mean, you know, it does take like 60, 90 seconds, something like that. But I'm saving anywhere from a 25 to 45 minute trip. Okay, well, how much money do I make an hour at my job? It, it's more than a dollar, dollar fifty, I promise. Okay, so what is my time worth? We've already got the thruster decay. We've already got the oil decay. We've already pretty much set that at about a half a ped. But what is the time worth? What is a 30-minute trip through space worth to you? What is a 45- to hour-long trip through space worth to you? What is your time worth per hour? Now that's an hour you can't be hunting, you can't be hanging out with your friends, you can't be repair skilling, you can't be mining, you can't actually be enjoying the game. You're essentially sitting there flying through space, praying nobody loots you, praying the, that you don't run into the one pirate that's still out there, while almost simultaneously having a heart attack the whole time. And what are you doing? You're reading a book? You're watching TV? You've got to be doing something other than just sitting there looking at your quad or your sleep fly through space. Otherwise, you're going to fall asleep, and then you're going to use a whole bunch of oil because your quad's just going to sit there, or your sleep's just going to sit there burning oil whenever you hit deep space until you wake up. I actually had that happen to a friend. I was waiting on Arcadia for him to get there, and I was like, dude, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? He actually fell asleep in space, and he ended up hitting deep space, and he literally just sat there for like an hour and a half burning oil while he was sleeping until he woke up. <laughs> that actually happened about three years ago. So what what is your time worth? Let's factor in the time. So let's take everything loot related out of it. We've got thruster decay and oil already in at about a half a ped. Then we've got a 20 minute to hour long flight depending on where we're going. So we've got 20 minutes, let's call it a half an hour to an hour of our time. And obviously our time is valuable. So are we really doing ourselves a disservice by using warp services? Not at all. We're actually doing ourselves a huge favor by using warp services. And this is why I do not understand why players are so stingy, why they are so 
penny-pinching on every single penny in this game that they don't like using warp services. I've seen people fly fully loaded through space and they go, oh, well, piracy isn't that big of a thing. Okay, so for nine and a half to fourteen and a half pet for a dollar to a dollar fifty, I can essentially save a half an hour to an hour of my life. I don't have to stress. I don't have to turn my hair gray. And I'm protecting about a hundred dollars worth of loot between TT value markup, let's just call it a hundred bucks. Because we're at eighty one bucks just for TT value. So let's just round it out to a hundred worth markup. So for one percent to one and a half percent, I can protect my investment. Th that's a pretty good insurance bet, especially when at the same time I'm saving myself a half an hour of my time. Now I'm actually in a little bit better position than that because I'm on Monria. So instead of using a warp ship, I can literally just hit a button and teleport directly to Calypso. And it's only seven ped, which is only six and a half ped above my fixed cost anyway. So I'm even in an even better position being on Monria. But even if I wasn't on Monria, it still makes vastly more sense to just use a warp ship to get from point A to point B with the amount of loot I'm carrying than it would be to actually waste a half an hour to hour of my life flying through space pointlessly, having that half a ped of fixed cost anyway, which is actually probably going to be a little bit more if I'm doing a long trip, because I'm going to burn more oil. Plus, I'm not stressing. And, I'm not going to be losing all the loot that I spent all that time to get. It's not just the TT value of the loot. What did I have to do to get all that loot? It was quite a bit. So, in this case, it makes perfect sense to teleport down. If I was on a different planet, no questions about it, I would be using a warp ship. N not even a question. Not even worth thinking about. I'm able to protect all that loot for about a half of a percent. That's a really, really, really good insurance rate. And like I said, it's saving me a half an hour to hour out of my, my life. Now, because I'm on Monterey, it's really saving me about 15 minutes of my life. But still, I'm, I'm saving a quarter of an hour. Well, I make a lot more than 70 cents for a quarter hour of my time. I promise you that. The hard part is when you don't have a giant stack of loot. That's when it becomes a much, much harder question. What happens when you have a much smaller batch? Well, there's a couple things. A, roll the dice, take it through space. I've done that a couple of times with smaller batches. I've been looking at batches where I'm going, man, it's only, you know, 13, 14 ped worth of loot. It's really not life-changing. It really doesn't make sense for me to, you know, spend 7 ped, 10 ped to protect seven or ten ped worth of stuff that makes no sense at all but you can always leave stuff in storage and this is one of the aspects of the game i think people overlook everybody always fills up their storage on calypso i'm guilty of this my, my storage on calypso absolutely full but every storage around the universe holds 500 items 500 on sirene 500 on taloon 500 on rocktropia 500 on next island so you've actually got a lot more storage than you think so what I've done is I've actually saved all this stuff over multiple, multiple, multiple trips to Monria. It's been sitting here for quite some time. I might teleport it all down today. I might wait and continue and just let the pile grow. At some point, you do actually have to sell the stuff to other players to get your money back and your profit. But needless to say, you don't have to take it all at once. You can take only what you need to take. So, when you're dealing with smaller stacks, I understand it's a little bit harder of a question. But maybe the first question isn't, how should we transport it? The first question is, should we transport it right now at all? Maybe that needs to be the question we ask first. Do I really need to take this from point A to point B right now? Or will I be back for it later? Does it help me more just staying here until I get a bigger stack? So, I know this isn't going to be a universal answer to the question because it's kind of an easy question to answer when you've got, you know, eight, nine hundred, a thousand ped worth of stuff that you're going to be transporting. It's kind of a no-brainer. It's kind of a harder question whenever you have a much smaller stack of stuff or maybe not a lot of stuff with a huge amount of markup. Sometimes it may even make sense to put some things with 100, 200, 300, 4 percent markup that are hard to sell in the trade terminal and just convert them back to ped 
instead of jacking with trying to sell something with small markup, small demand, and small stack size, and then just put the pet on your pet card and not have to worry about it at all. At the end of the day, to each their own. At the end of the day, it's a very personal choice. And the best advice I can give you is to ask yourself one primary question. If you were to get looted, would it drastically change your life? Would it drastically change your gameplay? Would it drastically change how much you enjoy playing in Tropia Universe? If the question is yes, then you probably should not take the chance on getting looted. Doesn't matter if you're dealing with 10,000 pet of loot or if you're dealing with one pet of loot. If getting looted and shot down and taken by a pirate is going to drastically, drastically change how you can play in Tropia and how much fun you get out of it, then I would not take that chance. That is the first and primary question you need to be asking. Beyond that, you can look at all the analysis from every which way later on. But that is the primary thing. Now, would a thousand ped really drastically change how I play in Tropia? Probably not. Would it change how much fun I had? Probably not. But would I regret have having done that? Yes, I would. So in this case, I'm either just going to keep my piles here on Monria and keep letting them grow, or I'm just going to pay the small fee and teleport down. Now, I will make other videos in the future, and I will actually tell you guys, like, if I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to take something through PvP lootable, I will tell you, I, I did it uh, a couple months back. I had, you know, I think it was like 4,000 sweat, and I just flew from Calypso to Next Island with it because I needed like three or 4,000 sweat on Next Island at the time, and I was headed that way, so I just grabbed it out of storage and went. And I told quite a few people, I was like, eh, here's what I'm going to do. Because it was three or 4,000 sweat, but it wasn't going to drastically change my life. So I think that is the bigger question. I think when you stop and really ask yourself, is it worth changing my gameplay, my enjoyment, looking at the fixed costs that I'm going to incur anyway, and then looking at the time I'm going to be saving, I think if people would stop and do that analysis before they just decide to throw everything in their plane and fly, because they go, oh, there's not a lot of pirates these days. I really think there's a lot of people who would use motherships to warp back and forth that don't currently use them. I think they're doing a huge disservice to themselves and the mothership owners by saying, oh, well, I'm just going to take the risk because there's not a ton of piracy going on. In doing that and having that thought process, you're still costing yourself a considerable amount of money, for I would say most players. Because, again, you're also saving the time. Time out of your life, stress out of your life, and sometimes, I would say probably the vast majority of the time, most players who are traveling through space with lootables, they're not factoring in the time. They're not factoring in the stress. They're not factoring in that part of their life that they could easily avoid. How many people are willing to go to work for $40 an hour and $30 an hour, $35, even $20 an hour? And they're saying, you know, if my boss came in and offered me $5 an hour, I'd say, absolutely no way. I quit. I'll find a different job if you're only going to pay me $5 an hour. But those same people are willing to get on Entropia and fly through space with $100 worth of loot and spend an hour of their time doing it because they don't want to spend a dollar to a dollar fifty. If you were to go to work today and your boss said, hey, um, we're not going to pay you what we've been paying you. We're only going to pay you a dollar to a dollar fifty an hour. Would you quit right then and there or would you be okay with that? Because that's what you're doing to yourself when you decide to fly from point A to point B, clear across the space map with lootables on you. What you're saying is, all this stuff that I'm carrying on me, forget all that. My time alone isn't worth a dollar to dollar fifty. Forget that I've got lootables on me. Just getting from point A to point B is going to take me anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. My time is only worth a dollar to a dollar fifty. That's essentially what you're saying to yourself. If you are trying to pinch the penny so tightly you are absolutely refusing to do any analysis to see if it makes more sense to take a warp ship, if it, if it makes more sense to save time and use a teleporter. And I think that's something that people just overlook all the time. So I know this isn't going to be something that answers the question of how do we get from point A to point B for everybody, 
I know it's not going to fit every situation, it's not going to fit every player, and it's not going to fit every player's every situation 100% of the time. The analysis doesn't even fit my situation and my play style 100% of the time. But if the thought process, if the way I kind of analyze when I'm going to buy a warp ticket or, or when I'm going to teleport versus when I'm going to do it myself, if that helps you guys in your analysis, then that's what really matters. So I'm going to leave it right there for now. Sip, sip, smack, smack, and I guess now cough, cough. You all know the rest. The cough is getting a little bit better. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure and hit that bell icon so you know when we upload a new video. And be sure and hit the like button on every video, whether it was super, super important to you or not. Because we always, always, always have a hater hitting the dislike button the moment we post. And getting those likes, that's what allows us to help make more videos, more content. Some of which will be super, super helpful to you. Some of which may only be moderately helpful to you. But it, that like button matters a lot. So we really appreciate every one we get. Also, be sure and head over to EarnPed.com because when you earn, we earn. That's by far the best way you guys can help support us. We were not the first, nor are we the only place where you can earn pet online. But when you guys pick us, it really, really helps us to keep doing what we do. Also, like I said, be sure and watch for the next video coming. Because the next video that's going to be coming out, like I said, it's it's going to be something pretty big. There may be a few players out there who they're like, oh, that light bulb had already came on for me. But I think for the vast majority of the people that play Entropia, it's going to be a game changer in a real way because it's going to actually allow them to put pen to paper on a few things and it's going to take a lot of the mystery and guesswork out of it so probably one of the biggest videos we're going to release over the next six months and it's coming tomorrow so for now sip sip smack smack y'all know the rest see y'all with the next video right quick